Okay, so I'm approaching the Green River Killers old house right now. It's located just outside Seattle in SeaTac, Washington, pretty close to the airport. The house was never destroyed, and part of the reason I'm showing you the house is because this was where most of these murders were actually committed. All right, I'm coming around here towards it. It's gonna be up here on the left, just right here where these cars are parked. There's actually a family that still lives there at the house. To get his victims over to his house, he would prearrange for sexual activity. He would usually show up on the strip where the prostitutes were, and he would be there with his infant son, for example, and the women would think he was just a, a family man and just your average Joe. He would often show them pictures of his baby and offer them food and jobs to, to get them over to his house. The Green River Killer wanted to create this image that he was just kind of a wimpy guy and would do no harm. Inside his house, he would often show the women his son's bedroom and photos, and then he would later have sex with them and strangle them. He was also careful about being seen. He would often park very close to the front door in his pickup truck with the women and then he would also park really close when putting them back into his pickup truck and discarding their bodies elsewhere. Though the Green River Killer wasn't that intelligent, he did have the foresight to minimize evidence. As he was talking to investigators, he did say that he would clip their fingernails to prevent skin cells from being detected so that the police could identify the blood type because back then they didn't have the DNA technology that they do now.